Happy New Year everybody. Welcome to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. Wanted to start out a little differently. Uh, do us a little personally. Thank you everybody that has become a subscriber. We just went over a thousand subscribers and I'm pretty excited about that. Pretty grateful and I really do appreciate your comments. I won't waste your time with a lot of talk here. So let me get right to it. The, the, what you'll see in the next segment here, it's been a probably a week since I posted and it's been a productive week I've been working on the spindle for the 5c tool holder and just in the last few days and I think the next remaining segments you know I made the spindle before uh, but in this in this segment you'll see that this is the part right here the spindle nut basically that tightens up the collet there's the 5c collet inside the inside the uh, spindle the tool holder spindle and this this part let me pull it all the way out for you. This tightens up the collet. It's threaded on the inside. So this was an interesting piece to make. And I wanted to thank Dan who has provided me with photographs. Uh, and it, without his pictures, I, I certainly wouldn't have had such a good understanding of how all this worked. So I made that. And then the most recent thing I made, let me take this off, take the spindle, the 5C collet out. And uh, so the most recent thing I made was this spindle nut which basically clamps the index plate onto the spindle as it sits inside the housing so that was also a fun project you know internal threading and a, a little bit of detail with machining the out, outer flats so that it can be tightened with a wrench if needed the fit is really nice and I, I'm not I don't think I'm gonna need much wrench tension on it but it came out really well I'm really excited about how that fits together and how the spindle has come by so far. So please stay tuned and check out the, uh, the, remess, the rest of the, uh, the video for details about how I made those things. The next thing I think I'm going to make, these are the plans I'm talking about. They're, I downloaded them from the Quorn.io groups. And um, big thanks to the folks that, that went before me that created these plans. And uh, as I mentioned, Dan has updated them recently and some improvements for the uh, plunger. So I'm going to be making this part, or attempting to, out of aluminum. And um, one inch thick aluminum, which if you followed my Gingri Shaper project, you'll recognize this. This is some of the uh, scrap pieces that I have left over from the, uh, my, the something that, that my friend Russ gave me. He and I took turns like cutting up this, uh, it was a stand, a big thick aluminum stand and a lot of useful parts have come out of that. I don't know if you can see this in the outline or not, but I've outlined this, the shape of it here, so I'm going to cut that out on the bandsaw and start the machining process of that tonight and tomorrow. So that'll be a subject of the next video. But it, again, the plans coming off the corn.io groups thing, um, the spindle nut was on figure five. I don't know if you can see that or not. But uh, Check those out and stay tuned for the rest of the drawing, or excuse me, the rest of the videos that talk about how I made these parts. And again, thank you for joining me on the, this adventure and the others. Um, I, as I finish up the corn, uh, you know, it'll be a while before I get completely done with it. But uh, there will be some really neat projects after that. I've got some lots of castings for the. Uh, three and a half inch gauge locomotives. You can see my big seven and a half inch gauge uh, Allen Mogul behind me on its stand. Uh, but I have some some plans, some castings, and a lot of parts to make some really small three and a half inch gauge locomotives. And you, you'll see some videos like that on the channel. I hope you enjoy those and uh, I look forward to hearing your comments. Please help pass the word. You know, I'm just trying to be a helpful hobbyist, pass along stuff that I'm doing, showing setups, and helping help the next person with their project. So again, thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I appreciate it. I hope this channel is useful to you. And a big thank you to everybody that subscribed and taken the time to comment and offer suggestions about things I need to do. So thank you very much. Stay tuned, kick back, relax, and enjoy the uh, making of these parts for the 5C tool holder spindle. Thank you. Okay, I'm working on the draw tube for the 5C collets, and this is from the downloaded plans. And if you can see, I started out with a piece of inch and a half steel. 
I turned it down according to dimensions. I bored it out seven eighths of an inch all the way through. And then I just opened the back up. I opened it up to about one and three sixteenths inch, actually a little bit larger than that. And then I threaded it 20 threads per inch. And let me show you the fit here. It's an awesome fit. And I, um, the one other thing I want to show the, the drawing, see how that hexagonal design has to get milled on there? I have a plan for that. And part of my desire to have this, um, to make this part first, I'll show you that when I get it done. But see how nice it spins in there. I had to take off a total of about 30 thou, but I just kept taking small cuts until I got it to fit smoothly. And there's no slop in there. I'm really pleased with that fit. So there's the uh, 5C collet. Here's the draw tube. This side will be sticking out the back end of the spindle. There'll be a raised round section here, and then I'll mill a, a hex on the, on the back. I'll show you that uh, later as we go along. Okay, as I mentioned in the last segment, I have to machine a hexagonal shape about 5 sixteenths of an inch wide on the back of this uh, spindle collet nut thing. So here it is. This is the, the side that I just did the parting off. I haven't even really cleaned it up, as you can see. But this is the side that was machined that threaded for the uh, th 20 thread per inch threads on the end of, this, uh, of the collets, the 5C collets. And this is the side that will stick out the back of the, of the um, tool holder. So I need to machine a hex shape on the back of that. So I have an idea. I have these 5C collet blocks. I think the hardest part of this is going to be putting this all together one-handed. But okay, so the 5C collet goes inside the collet block. And I actually used a 7 8 collet here just in case I need extra support. I'll explain that in a, sem a second. So put this over here and, and thread this on the back here. Thread it on nice and tight. And then what I, what I can do is put this inside the vise on the mill. I'll have this tight and I'll have the bottom end supported. Let's see if I can snug that. I'll snug this up tight. You know, good good and snug, hand tight. Sorry. Okay. So I can put this in the mill, have the bottom of this supported so that the downward pressure of the mill won't won't um, deflect the, uh, the the end of it. But I can mill a flat, just go back and forth till it take off about I think it takes about sixty thousand per side thousands. Then I can flip it one time, do the same thing. Do that six times, and I'll end up with a nice hex on the back here. So using the the uh, 5C collet inside a hex collet block, and as I mentioned, the center bore is bored out to seven eighths of an inch, on and which matches what that is. So I've got seven eighths inch stock. If I need to, I could put a bar through here and and create another uh, spindle to tighten up. But I don't think I'm going to need to do that. You know, the the force of the mill milling cutter will be slight so I can just I can just have this supported so that's my idea there I'll do that probably tomorrow night and I'll show you how that works before I get started milling the hexagon flats on the back back of the uh, spindle collet nut I uh, wanted to show the setup so I've got the hexagonal um, collet block in the vise in the mill and I've got a piece of 7 8 inch steel clamped in here. I could clamp it down on the ends if I need to. I don't think I'm going to need to. We'll find that out in a few minutes. But I've got it supported, <clears throat> excuse me, with a little extra scrap stock underneath. And I'm basically just going to mill off 60 thou on the, the flats on the end here. Rotate it six times and I should be done, except for putting it in the uh, back in the lathe to smooth it out again. So that's the setup. And I'll bring you back when I uh, when I'm on the last flat and show you what it looks like. All right, so this is the very last cut. It's worked out pretty good so far. Let me show you move back and forth a little bit. Focus is a little tricky. Let's see if I can get you a better angle here. So like I said, I took, a, I took 60 thousandths off each side. And I'll, let me cut the motor off and the uh, 
rotary phase converter and I'll show you what I'll take it out of the vise and show you what it looks like but this worked out really well I didn't need any additional support or, or packing you know I, like I said I could have bolted this down but the packing stayed steady underneath there and really pleased with how it came out I'll, show, I'll take it out of the vise and show you so here we go I just took it out of the vise came out really nice I'm going to put it in the lathe so I can kind of round off, file off the edges a little bit. But really pleased with how that came out. And there's plenty of material there left for the, uh, you know, for strength. Very happy about that. And if you're seeing all the light here, I rewired one of my antique lamps. The one you can see with the yellow uh, zip ties on it. I rewired that thing. So I've got LED bulbs in there now. So... There's about twice as much light on the mill as there used to be. I'm really happy about that. Here I've got the part chucked up in the fore jaw. I'm just smoothing the edges a little bit. It's going to make a little bumpy noise here. Not to worry. About 200 RPM. I always admire those uh, you know, fancy model engineers in, in uh, England, you know, the model engineer works out. They always have nice, they make a point about relieving edges and smoothing things out. So I, I did that and I also relieved the uh, inside here with this tool. I to go cut the motor off and we can take a look at the finished product. Really nice. I'll buff that out with the little buffing wheel on my Dremel, but I'm real happy with how this part has come out. So that's the 7 8 inch hole. You can get a pretty good view of the hex part. And I do love my four jaw chuck. It makes uh, all this kind of stuff really excellent. And also, I'm glad I did the order of operations like I've done working on this part now. Because I'll be all set. The, the, the last major assembly that I have to make will be the spindle. So pretty well up to speed on a lot of my lathe techniques. Here we are, I'm machining the flats on the spindle nut, starting out with a piece of inch and three quarter steel, I'm using the same setup basically. I put it in the lathe first and centered it, and I was all ready to bore it out and thread it, and I thought, you know, it'd be a lot easier to put the flats on it first, and then I'll just have to recenter it when I get in the lathe. So basically just taking 60 thou off each of the four spots. And um, what I did, well, I had it in the lathe. I went ahead and marked it out with glue like that. And you know, adjusting the depth here, hang on a second. So I marked out the line where the flats were supposed to be milled. And also marked out the, the end where it's the back of it. So here we go, taking off 60 thou. This is the last, the fourth of it. And I can take it out. I'll have to recenter it in the four jaw chuck, but just thought I'd show the setup here in the mill. If you can see, there is the four, each of the four sides. So it'll get bored and threaded in just a, a minute here. Okay, I just finished making the spindle nut. That's the part I'm spinning with my pinky finger here. This part is shown on figure five of the drawings that you can download from the corngroups.io group. And I had had to redo this a couple times. I'm not really thrilled exactly with the fit. It's a little bit on the loose side, but I actually think that's gonna be okay because the job of the spindle nut is to clamp the, uh, the index plate or AKA the hand wheel in place. So let me show the, cause this is kind of hard to tell from the plans. So here, let me take this out. This is the collet closer inside. This fits inside the spindle. And I've showed how I made this thing. This is kind of a fun project. And what it does, let me show you this way. It actually, it screws to the back of the collet, of the 5C collet. So, and it tightens it up. So that's the, the thing that tightens up the 5C collet that sticks out the back. There's the collet, just you know, one of the collets that I use, and pull that out. So then you're left with the spindle and then the spindle nut. And as I said, what that does, that clamps the index plate or the hand wheel to the shoulder here. So 
That's kind of, I think in the next thing I'm going to make is the actual index plate itself. And these are the drawings that come on the tool holder. And I think I'm going to use aluminum because I've been corresponding with Dan that did the, the, um, the revised drawings for some of this. And he pointed out that having that this made out of aluminum would save a lot of weight on the 5C tool holder. So I think I'm going to do that. But I'll make this next, and then basically the only thing left is the small parts that will go inside here, the little pin. Um, but the, the only complicated thing really is the, that I haven't done yet is the casting itself. So I'll work on that, and I will show you those segments as I go along. But And the Dan, uh, let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about. Dan revised some of these drawings for the plunger. And because he pointed out that there was some, it, the original drawings, they didn't work very well. So I'm going to try out his design for making the plunger. I'll probably do all this stuff, all the steel and aluminum parts before I machine the cast iron. But I'll bring you along for those pieces as well.